I'm the old ranger, and Death Valley's my stamping ground. Many's the tale of adventure I'm going to tell you about the Death Valley country. True stories, mind you. I can vouch for that. My yarn this evening is about the chivalry that broke all records in the Death Valley region. You never heard of a chivalry? Well, neither did Jay Kennison Phipps until he came out to Death Valley on a prospecting trip, looking not for gold, nor silver, nor borax, but for moths and butterflies. What the heck's he doing, Rocky? A darned if I... Oh, it's you. Get away from me, you clean jumping varmint! <laughs> Hiya, Shorty. Hiya, Mert. Say, who's the brush shopper out there with the fishnet? That, my good man, is Jay Kenliston Phipps, Jr., just arrived from Boston. <laughs> hey, that's pretty classy. Must have money, huh? Money and a license to hunt bugs. It's not a license. It's a diploma. And he's not a bug hunter. He's a lepidopterist. Oh. A leper what? A lepidopterist. A collector of moths and butterflies. Oh. Well, if that's what he's chasing, he ought to come and look at my bureau drawers. I got plenty of moths over there. <laughs> the kind of moths Mr. Phipps is after wouldn't be caught dead in your drawers. He's looking for a rare specimen found only in this region. Nepidoptery is a very specialized study and nothing to laugh about. How do you know so much about it? He told me. Mert's got a crush on it. You better watch out, Fred. The first thing you know, he'll have her in his net. He better not let me catch him trying to knock the butterflies right out of him. Don't you dare, Fred Thompson, or I'll... <gasps> Oh, Mr. Phipps. Any luck? Oh, yes, indeed. I've been fortunate beyond my most optimistic expectations. So you're J. Keniston Phipps, Jr., huh? Yes, that's correct. But you seem to have the advantage of me. I don't recall... My name is Fred Thompson, better known as uh, Fraction Fred. Fraction Fred? I say that is an odd cognomen. Would it be rude to inquire of you where you obtain such an appendage? Such a what? Appendage. In, uh, in this instance, uh, nickname. Well, uh, oh, oh, well, I'll tell you about that sometime. But right now, all I want to say is if you're going to stay around here, you better stick to collecting butterflies with wings. Get me? Why, your tone implies a warning, but your words leave me confused. I have never seen butterflies without wings. Uh, do you know of any? Let me put it another way. It isn't necessary to put it anyway, Fred. Now go ahead, Mr. Phipps, about the luck you have. Oh, yes, indeed. I have in here a very excellent Ampantesis Virgo. <gasps> oh, that's wonderful. It sure is. What is it? A moth. Ampantesis is its classification, and Virgo is Latin for virgin. Well, what do you know about that? Comes here and snags himself a Virgo before he even gets his bags unpacked. Doing all right, ain't he, Fred? <laughs> uh, would you like to look at it? I'd just love to. You'll have to be careful. It's still alive. Oh, it's looking right back at me. Well, let it look at me. <laughs> oh, now see what you've done. <laughs> so far, Joe, but... What the thunder? <laughs> I beg your pardon, sir. Go on, there you go, Jay. Good luck. Get that bird, Joe. Come on. Come on, come on. Come on. Come Get him, get him, get him, Fitz. <laughs> get that bird, Joe Fitz. Come on, Fitz. There you are, sonny boy. He won't fly away now. Truer words were never spoken. <laughs> nice shooting, Rocky. <laughs> Keep your hands off of me or I'll add a buzzer to them pieces. I'm sorry, Mr. Phipps. He shouldn't have done that, Rocky. We well, yelled for help, didn't he? Yes, but he wanted to catch it, not blast it. It's in all right, Miss Mullins. The old man didn't understand. 
I ain't no man, old or otherwise. Well, I beg your pardon, madam. Your, your attire misled me. Yeah, I guess it could, that. Just shows you clothes don't make the man. <laughs> you shut up! And as for that there bug, what's all fired important about it? Mr. Phipps collects moths, and it was a very rare specimen. I may never get another. Oh, shucks, I know where there's a lot of them things. Like this? Yep. And other kinds, too. Big ones, little ones, some with stripes on them, some where? with... Where? Brush Creek, over Death Valley Way. Well, how do I get there? I'll show you. You will? She will not. I will, too. We can make it in a day easy if Pop Alonis is automobile, will you, Pop? Well, now, I don't know. That's a pretty rough road. <laughs> yeah, it is, isn't it? Well, I'll be happy to pay for the use of the car and any damage I might incur. Uh, well, on second thought, I guess it ain't too rough. We'll start early Saturday morning. Now, now listen to me. Fred, what? would you do me a favor? Sure. Go fall down a mine shaft. Ha! And pick yourself a deep one. <laughs> uh, come on, Shorty. <laughs> How about it, Joe? Just one more time, that's all I'm asking. I'm sorry, Rocky, but I absolutely can't give you no more credit. It's got to be cash on the barrel head from now on. Can't get supplies without money. You can't get money without prospecting. You can't go prospecting without supplies. Like wiping your mouth on a hoop. You just go around in circles. It is if I don't want to do it, Rocky. But you're on the books now for mighty near $400. Well, thanks anyway, Joe. Uh, just a minute, Rocky. I guess it'll be all right just one time more. It will? Well, thank you, Joe. Thank you. <laughs> Bring her back by dark or you'll have a date with me. Never seen such a paradise for Lepidoptera. Uh, look at this rare specimen. Uh... I should find you way out here in the desert is almost too good to be true. Oh, I cannot take my eyes off. So different from all the others. So lovely, so delicate. More priceless than a jewel. Ah, 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 ah. Be careful. Don't break those pretty legs. <laughs> I don't believe I've ever seen such a long antenna or such a well-developed mesothorax. Truly, you are the queen of queens. And I shall keep you and treasure you always. Oh, Mr. Phipp! Why, Miss Mullins! That was the most beautiful speech anyone ever said to me. But I wasn't... The... Oh, don't say any more. Showed up. Hello, Shorty. Hello, Pa. Well, how'd it go? Oh, we had a wonderful day. Yes, indeed. You got what you was after, huh? I certainly did. And something on which I had not planned. A beautiful Americanus Femalius. Americanus Femalius? I, I don't believe I've ever seen one of them things. Yes, you have, Pop. That's me. Uh, come again? In a matter of levity, Mr. Mullins, I was attempting to inform you that your daughter and I have discovered a mutual affection for each other. Why, you don't say. <laughs> is that true, Myrtle? It is. Well, I ain't going to stand for it. No lily-fingered bug chaser is going to add my girl to his collection. Don't you talk to him like that. You keep out of this. Look at Phipps. I got a strong urge to start collecting those Lapa, the Lapadera's hides. If you don't want yours tacked to my barn door, you better be out of this territory by morning. Is that clear? Onions. What? You've been eating onions, Mr. Thompson. 
and your close proximity is repulsive to me, you'd kindly maintain a respectable distance. And furthermore, Miss Mullins explained to me how you acquired the nickname Fraction by cheating poor Miss Rocky out of a fraction of land that was worth a considerable sum of money. I never cheated her. He just overlooked that fraction, so I stepped in and filed on it. It was good business and smart business. It was a contemptible deed and denotes a person of very, very slippery character. You mealy mouth Easterner, I'll break your neck. Sit down. You should learn to control your temper, Mr. Thompson. Only animals display their feelings by physical violence. Well, I should retire to my quarters. Good night, Miss Mullins. Good night, gentlemen. Hey, Fred, what happened to you? I don't know. Put his finger on my neck and I got as weak as a baby. The darndest thing I ever seen. Hey, that fellow's dangerous. You better watch out, Murdy. He might do it to you. He doesn't have to. <laughs> Hi, Mert. I was just coming to see you. Good morning, Mr. Thompson. Uh, so you missed me while I was away? Away? Yeah, I was over the county seat for four days. Oh, I'm sorry. I I've been so busy I was unaware of your absence. Ah, oh, come on, Mert. He ain't gonna throw me over for that guy, are you? It ain't fair. Why not? Well, well, for one thing, I've known you longer than he has. The depth of one's feelings are not governed by the length of acquaintanceship, Mr. Thompson. Oh. Hey, Mert, Mert, listen. Why don't you get some sense? This guy Phipps ain't got nothing but a butterfly net. You ain't even got that. Oh, no, I got plenty. I haven't told you anything about it because, well, I wanted to surprise you. But exactly one minute after midnight on the 30th of this month, I'll be worth $50,000. Where are you going to get it? If I tell you, will you keep it a secret? Uh-huh. Cross your heart? Cross my heart. Well, look, I found out the sandstorm claim is lapsing. The owner hasn't done his required assessment work this year. And you're going to grab it. Well, not grab it. Let's say uh, relocate it. You see, I got the papers all filled out. And at the stroke of midnight on the 30th, I'll be on the ground, ready to file. You would. And why not? I'm sorry I ever gave you my word I wouldn't tell. Good morning, Keniston. Good morning, Keniston. Hmm? Miss Mullins, what brings you here? We had a date to discuss our wedding plans. Don't you remember? Oh, I'm sorry it completely slipped my mind. It hasn't slipped your mind that you want to get married, has it? Oh, no, no. I, I'm still very strongly in favor of that. Pop thought we might want to go away for the wedding, but I prefer it here, don't you? Yes, I think that would be much nicer. And uh, I'm not in favor of long engagements, are you? No, uh, not too long. Then how about next Wednesday? Next Wednesday? Let me see. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. The Cecropia moth hatches that week. But, um, three weeks from next Wednesday is open. How does that sound? Sounds like a long way off. But if you're sure no moths will be around to bother us, why, three weeks from Wednesday it is. Splendid, splendid. Keniston, oh, pretty soon it'll all be over but the shivering. Yes, I intended to speak to you about that. About what? This shivering, as you call it. Now, if I understand it correctly, when there is a wedding in these rural areas, the people gather themselves outside the bride and groom's domicile and make themselves obnoxious with noises of every conceivable description. That's right. So we'll invite them in for food and drink. Yes. Well, I have had a taste of the horse playing and the coarse jokes predominant in this community, and I shall not play host to such an affair. But a wedding will hardly seem legal without a shivery. Besides, if you don't invite them in, they'll just keep up the racket until you do. That, Miss Mullins, should prove very interesting. Oh. 
Why don't you look where you're going? I beg your pardon, Miss Rocky. It's nice to see you again. Why? Why, uh, why, just because it is nice. How was the prospecting trip? Did you find anything? Yeah. I'm on my way back. I was hoping you'd had the same sort of luck that I had. Oh, I obtained some wonderful specimens over there in Brush Canyon. And I want to thank you again for sending me there. Reckon you've got some thanks coming to me for fixing up my credit with Joe at the store. Oh, I requested him not to say anything to you. He didn't. Mert did. But if you figured on getting anything for Oh, no, you... no, indeed. I, I had no ulterior motive, I assure you. You, you mean you done it just out of kindness? Out of selfishness. You see, I received more pleasure in giving than you did in receiving. It's been a long time since anyone done something for me without an axe to grind. Well, so long I can't even remember. And I... I don't know what to say. Don't say anything. Leave me alone, will you? And don't be so dang nice. You got me blubbering like an old woman. If you ever tell anybody I busted oh, down... Now, don't worry. I won't say a word. Five kegs of beer. Five kegs of beer. <clears throat> Fifty pounds of ham. Fifty pounds of ham. A small barrel of pickles. Small barrel of pickles. One gallon of olives. One gallon of olives. <clears throat> Two cases of uh, crackers. Two cases of crackers. Uh, same of cookies, too. Two cases. Make it four, friend. All right, make it four, Pop. Four cases cookies. What's all that stuff for? Pips is shivery. I hear tell he's dead set against one. No, yeah, he might be set against one, but he's going to have one anyway. The loudest, gall darndest shivery that ever hit Death Valley. And he's going to pay for it, too. I got to get me something out of losing, Mert. You're just blunting your pick, Fred. That fifth feller's stubborn. And when he says no shivery, my money says there'll be no shivery. Your money? <laughs> If you had any, you mean. Well, I can get some if you're interested. I'm interested. How much? You name it. Five hundred dollars. <laughs> Five hundred dollars. <laughs> Where did you ever get that much, Rocky? From you. Oh. Me? Sure, my credit's good, ain't it? Well, sure, but only for groceries. All right. Five hundred dollars worth of groceries. How about it? It's a bet. Do you like it? Oh, yes, it's very nice. Pop loaned it to us until we go back east. That was very generous of him. I... I, I brought your butterfly net and equipment over. Why, thank you. Isn't that suit kind of warm? Yes, it is very. Why don't you change into something more comfortable? That's a very good idea. I beg your pardon. How about blowing out the lamp? You mean, to have the house in darkness? As long as we're not going to ask them in, we might as well discourage them completely. What would they think? Let them think what they want to. No. We're keeping the lights on. But we'll suffocate with everything shut up. At least we'll suffocate with dignity. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Cole, give it everything you got and keep it up till it's 
butterfly catcher comes to the door. <laughs> Midnight. They've been at it for four straight hours. I trust they're enjoying themselves. Well, I'm not. Why don't you give up and let him in? Most emphatically, no. I do not give up that easily. It well, looks like Rocky's won our bet. Yeah, well, I ain't through yet. Yeah, but it's morning already. There's no law against holding a shivery during the day. You mean you want to keep on going? You're darn right I do. Not me. I'm going home to get me some sleep. Well, you go ahead and quit if you want to. The rest of us are going to stick it out, ain't we? Yeah! Oh, no! All day long, Fred kept the shiverers hard at it. And on into a second night. Around dawn, they brought in reinforcements. Another day. Almost 48 hours now they've been at it. With neither side showing any signs of yielding. And then toward midnight of the second night, Silence seems louder than the noise. Fraction Fred states his final attack. Keniston, what was that? Where are you going? I'm leaving you, Mr. Phipps. Leaving your bed and board, as the saying goes. Myrtle, please. I've stood all I can, so if you'll please let me by. Now, Myrtle, I realize that our marriage has been very trying so far, but please just have a little patience. Just a little longer, please. What for? What? You're not a man. You're a moth. Uh, Miss Ruff. Did you get it? Yep, everything's hunky-dory. How did you get in? That wonder. Splendid, splendid. What's going on here? Come in, ladies and gentlemen. The latch string is out. <laughs> Go right into the kitchen, folks, and eat and drink your fill. So we finally blasted you into it, huh? Your endurance and tenacity has been most commendable. Well, I don't know what that means, but you ain't gonna think it's so good when Pop sends you a bill for all the beer and grub I sent over. Nothing can dampen my happiness over your success. Would somebody please Why, tell yes, me what... Why, yes, my dear, I'd be more than happy to. <laughs> well, what are you smirking about? We're in, you lost. Yep, so did you. Now, what day this is? Well, certainly, it's Friday. Nope. Saturday. One hour and 20 minutes past the 30th. Thir the 30th? <laughs> You've been so busy worrying about a little chicken feed, you plumb forgot about the sandstorm claim, didn't you? Where'd you find out about this? Mr. Phipps heard you telling Myrtle outside his laboratory. So that's why he wouldn't let us shiverios in. Let me get that guy. He's busy. He's going to be a lot busier. All right, Fipsy boy. Well, I've got myself a leopard burst. 